How's it going everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is the fourth and final part of What If Deku Was a Ghoul. Before I begin, I would just like to say I'm sorry that there's no gameplay footage in the background of this video, as I just couldn't record because my recording software was bugging, glitching out, and wouldn't even start recording. So I'm sorry for that, but I hope you all still do enjoy this video, and if you do, smash that like button and comment down below any of your what if suggestions and if you really do enjoy this video and this series in general smash that subscribe button as well i upload every single day on this channel so it would really mean a lot and without further delay let's begin with this final part dragonite dragonite what do you say about the recent rumors that your son killed endeavor oh all of those are just a bunch of bogus. I haven't seen my son in 11 years, so whoever that was, they weren't my son. Izuku, along with all the rest of the League of Villains, would be sitting around the table watching as the TV and the news would continue rolling. Izuku would sit there with a small smirk on his face, watching as his father would continue rambling on about how he wasn't his son at all. But we had to have a description of the suspect. He had just vibrant green hair and eyes, both of which your son was reported to have at his age. Yes, but all of that could have been changed. What if it was just dyed? Well, yes, that is true. Hair can be dyed, but that doesn't distinguish the eye color, though, does it? Dragonite would stop talking before basically being backed into a corner by the reporter. He would wave him off, saying that he's had enough of questions before jumping off to go fight a bunch more villains. As Zook would sit there now fully smiling, he really thinks he can just blatantly push off that I'm his son, huh? That's astonishing. Zook would do himself shaking his head, completely just, just in awe how his father really was going to do that. Of course, it was to protect his family, and this was the same person that had just abandoned him 11 years earlier, so it really isn't much of a surprise. However, Izuku would just make it even more sweet when they would end up meeting eventually soon. As Izuku would sit there, he would turn towards Dobby before asking them when their training begins. As Dobby would look towards him, he would say, well, we do have a couple years until... Yue's graduation ceremony for this next coming class. So, why don't we go ahead and do it? Well, yes, we could wait till the class of the first years graduate now. But how about this? We do it at the end of this year. So the graduating class happens. And there's only one more class. And there wouldn't be another Class 1A, only this one. We attack it, destroy UA, no more UA. There was only those three classes. Two of them can't graduate and become heroes because they don't have their full just hero licenses and diplomas from UA. If we do that, we could be perfect. And if we stop, or if we do it a couple weeks before the final exams for that year, then we just so might happen to cut off three years worth of students from becoming heroes. Suku would say looking around as all of them would nod their heads before standing up. That would mean we'd have to start training right now, wouldn't it? Precisely. Suku would respond as they would all go down to the training quarters to instantly start sparring with each other. Almost instantly though, it would realize that Izuku far outmatched all of them as the gym and weights down there had basically only been used by him as he had already been there for just around a couple of days now and he was the only one that had ever touched any of them and because of this it was already stronger than them even in those two days and even because Izuku had been to prison and had been working out there he had just established the habit making himself far stronger than 
all of them there, so when they would all try to spar him, he would easily one by one knock them down, regardless of what their cork was, if it was fire, if it was just a blood cork or Shigaraki's cork, Izuku would beat them easily, as with his just enhanced speed and strength, he was easily able to dodge all of their attacks while getting in close with his Kagane, and would simulate a finishing blow, killing them. Suzuku also would tell them they have to get past killing people. If they're going to become real villains, they're going to have to kill. And because of that, and because of what's going to happen at UA, they really are just going to have to get besides that fact. As Izuku would be sitting there, as the rest of them would be doing that, we cut over to Uchako Uraraka sitting with a chair right next to Nezu. As Nezu would stare across from his table, seeing Uraraka sitting there, he would start asking her a couple of questions. So you're telling me that this kid that supposedly attacked us in the summer training camp, you know him? Yes, I do. I talked to him quite a bit before or I was accepted into UA. Um, his name, he said it was Izuku. Izuku, Izuku. Nesu would turn towards his computer before typing in a bunch of keys. As he would click enter, there was only one reported case of an Izuku anywhere, and that Izuku was Izuku Midoriya. Nesu would look towards Uraraka with a suspicious glance, asking her, so, Uraraka, what might have been this Izuku's last name? Oh, it was, um, if I remember correctly, wait, he didn't say his last name, he just said his first one. Hmm. Well, it says here he's Izuku Midoriya of the Midoriya family. His father is the hero Dragonite, so it does appear these rumors about him killing Endeavor are true. It's quite a shame how powerful he is. He would have made a great hero. It doesn't have a file of his cork, though, either, which is also quite mysterious. He would say, as we now cut forward another couple of months to see Izuku and the rest of the League of Villains, now with a couple more members, all having just cloaks all over their body, these black shadowy cloaks guarding their face and shielding them from being recognized. As all of them would hop through Kirigiri's portal, they would then appear right outside of UA. As would then have Kirigiri make some portal, getting them onto the other side without even just causing any alarms to be just sounded. As this would be happening, thunder would strike overhead as it would begin pouring rain. However, they wouldn't just they wouldn't bother with this, with any of the newer recruits rushing around, just deactivating all the alarms. These electrical villains easily just completely shocking them and frying them so that they wouldn't function. And with, they would all rush around before eventually one of them would sound the alarm. Heroes would jump into action as the teachers would all rush outside, seeing many of the well, not heroes, while the UA students would all rush outside. There wasn't any heroes on campus besides maybe a select few. Many of them still were living off campus in other quarters. And because of this, now stood an army of UA hero students against the League of Villains. Izuku would stand there facing off, staring on towards all of them as... and up walking back, disappearing into the crowd, as his eyes would catch that of Uraraka's. As Uraraka would see this, she would rush towards the crowd along with the rest of the UA students, however, she would end up disappearing, running to the side. Following Izuku, Suzuku would completely go back into the crowd, going towards the back. He would continue walking out, where Uraraka would end up tackling him to the ground, now far off from the rest of the massive battle. As Uraraka would tackle him, she would go to punch him across the face, however, his Kagane would block the punch easily. Uraraka, you're gonna have to try harder than that, Izuku 
would say, now fully remembering who she was, her face now this close to him, he could remember. Flipping her off of him, Izuku would stand up before staring at her. Do you remember what I said to you at that forest? N no, why? I said I'd kill you if you ever challenged me. Izuku would say as Uraraka would get up before him and before his kagane would go right through her stomach, lifting her up, as she would just be shocked, blood dripping down from the wound. She would stand there, her legs and arms kicking about, flopping all around, struggling to survive as she would start breathing in deeper and deeper, as blood would start rising up from her mouth, spewing over. As she would be doing this, Izuku would look towards her, before smiling. <sighs> You've always been a pain in the back of my memory and mind, Suku would say before plunging another one of his tendrils right through her stomach, and then another, then another. As would be sitting there, before Zuku would release all of them, the Kagane going back, just withdrawing it, so Zuku would walk up towards her. She would stand there, her massive wound eeping. Suku would sit there looking towards her for smiling. Ah, thank God it's finally over. Suku would say, grabbing her by her hair before kneeing her right in the chest as she would fall to the floor unconscious. Bakugo, who managed to get through many of the villains, would now be staring there, looking towards Uraraka, seeing Suku. Who standing over her, her knocked out unconscious body would be under Izuku. Bakugo instantly activating one for all would rush towards Izuku, going for an explosion, however it would easily be blocked by Izuku's Kagane. You're gonna have to try harder than that, Bakugo. I could sense you from a mile away. Your anger, it blows right out of you, so much so that I could s- you've- the very minute I walked through those gates, Suku would say, turning around right towards Bakugo, punching him across the face with such speed Bakugo didn't even have the time to react. Bakugo would sit there wondering what the hell just happened as Suzuki would just punch him once again. Come on, Bakugo, you're better than this. As Bakugo would jump backwards using his explosions before racing towards Izuku, sending three barrages of explosions right onto Izuku's body, all landing direct hits. However, when the smoke would clear, Izuku would stand there completely unharmed. Izuku would smile towards him before laughing. Ah, oh, you really have grown weak. That one for all of yours, if I'm not mistaken, All Might's quirk. It's making you a failure. You haven't had to work hard enough for the things you've been given. You've been given everything in your life, and you haven't worked for anything. Izuku would say, his eyes glowing, just complete black, so the red would shine through the night, the rain pounding onto his skin. Izuku's Kagane would out racing towards Bakugo once again, Punching him before Bakugo would send an explosion right through his gut, this time so much faster, so much harder. This with a combined punch would send Izuku flying backwards right th through a brick wall. Izuku slamming down, he would fall to the ground. As Izuku falling to the ground, Bakugo would walk over towards him, grabbing him by his hair, slamming multiple explosions right into his face. He would continually do this on repeat. Suzuki would continue to feel this before being dropped by Bakugo. After being dropped, Suzuki would get up slowly, wobbling on his feet, having not had competition like this in years. Suzuki would stand there wobbling, smiling with blood melted into his teeth. He would race towards Uraraka's body as Bakugo would do the same. Izuku would grab Uraraka's body before biting her right across the shoulder. So, and Izuku would start regenerating even faster, as he basically had Kaneki's entire ghoul system. He was basically kind of like Kaneki, and because of this, he had the regeneration most ghouls in Tokyo Ghoul don't. Suzuki would easily regenerate completely back to 100%. He would look towards Bakugo, or all of this. I didn't. 
I saw what would come out of nowhere, and so would All Might. The two would surround ba surround Izuku, and Bakugo would do the same. All Might would go into a punch, punching Izuku, sending him flying upwards, as Bakugo would slam an explosion into Izuku's back, sending him flying back down, slamming into the ground. As this would happen, I saw what would erase Izuku's cork. However, as the dust would clear, Izuku would stand up, his cork still completely active. It was a mutation cork, and therefore, I saw what couldn't erase it. Izuku would race towards Aizawa, before plunging all four of his tendrils right through his stomach, doing it so quickly before he would drop Aizawa's body to the floor. As he would turn towards All Might, he would stab it through All Might's chest, breaking into its ribcage and yanking out his lungs. Dropping them to the floor, Bakugo staring at this, Izuku would turn towards him, as All for One would then appear in a portal. I think that's enough, Izuku. He would say, patting him on the shoulder, turning towards all of them, as I, all for one would see that the army of his villains had almost been defeated by all of the UA students. There were still a select few left, which would all be thrown through a portal, going back towards just the warehouse that he was at. He would look down towards Izuku, being his strongest member, asking him if he would just leave, to which Izuku said he couldn't. This wasn't who he was. As he would end up looking towards the massive horde of UA students racing towards him, before Izuku would end up smiling. I don't care if I die here, as long as I go out fighting. I suggest you go back towards the warehouse. This isn't your fight anymore, all for one. Izuku would say, opening up his eyes, racing towards the mass. Just the massive horde of UA students is all for one with nod his head. I know I know you're gonna survive this Izuku. I just don't know where you'll be afterwards. It would say disappearing into a portal as Izuku would race on toward it's all of them for using his just Kagane so well, using it to his advantage, spiking it into the ground, completely swiftly changing his direction, killing hundreds of students with ease, sort of like Madara's fight in one of the Ninja Wars, how he was easily able to combat all of the attacks, how they would go in with sort of a sword or kunai, and he would easily disarm them before knocking them out. Izuku would be doing the exact same, except killing them. As Izuku would be doing this, finally, only a select few would remain, this being the severely weakened Uraraka, who had somehow miraculously been healed by Recovery Girl and Bakugo. Uraraka, having such a massive injury healed, would be completely just asleep. As Izuku, smiling to this, seeing that she was asleep, Izuku would race towards her her before stopping. He would stop a moment before smiling towards both Bakugo and to the rest of just the UA students being Todoroki, Mirio, and Nejire, the last to survive, as Izuku would end up smiling. I don't understand this at all, but somehow my cork can spread, Izuku would say laughing. As he'd be laughing, Uraraka would stand up, as her eyes would glow up red, she would stare towards Izuku before racing towards him, stabbing her hand right through his chest. As Izuku would smile towards it as the rain would drip down onto him, Izuku would look back towards Uraraka before smiling. Yah, Uraraka, if only you knew what was going to happen next. And just like that, Izuku was gone, disappeared into the shadows, as Uraraka would completely collapse once more, completely void of all energy, barely having enough to even stand up for the sneak attack. As Izuku was gone, he would end up watching from the shadows as Uraraka would end up just being placed in a hospital, and all the food they came to give her, she would try to eat, but would only merely just throw it up afterwards. It was disgusting, it was putrid to her. She didn't understand it at all. As she'd be doing this, Suki 
it would end up appearing before bedside, just Swift opening up the window so fast she didn't see him. You know, Raka, I'd stop eating all that food. It's not going to taste good anymore to you. Sadly, some of my blood managed to get into one of your wounds that transferred my cork into yours. Your gravity cork has been completely destroyed and mutated into mine. You... You now have a ghoul cork. You have to eat human flesh to survive and maintain your strength. Well, technically not. You could still eat human food. But it's very hard to survive on it. Trust me. I had to survive on it for a year. I'll let you go out with that, alright? As you could say before disappearing once again, Uraraka had him, or all of a sudden something would appear on her bedside. She would grab it before blood would drip out of it. She would look towards it as her eyes would then become completely black. She would see it before completely devouring it, just so hungry she couldn't even think anymore. Basically getting into a state that Izuku had once been in. As Izuku who had then seen at Izuku would smile. We cut forward five years as Izuku had left the League of Villains and it had basically been hunted to extinction. All for one still was out there, however had this decided that it was best to stop planning for a couple years as the one for all just person being Bakugo was still alive and he had to find out where Bakugo happened to be, who was just exactly the number one hero and all. He was just very elusive, he wasn't like All Might, he hated the cameras, sort of like a mix of All Might and Endeavor. As Izuku would stand on top of the ledge, he would end up looking down to see Uraraka right by his side. The two ended up meeting up together. So we cut back, Uraraka would end up leaving the hospital, and with Yue completely destroyed and in ruins, she had nowhere else to go. She would go back towards her parents, but when she told her them what she, she had heard and what had happened, they had basically disowned her. Although they loved her, they couldn't deal with someone who was going to be a murderer or a cannibal. And because of that, they she was disowned. And after just a couple of months of distress, she th sought out Izuku, where they would both end up becoming sort of a villainous team, striking back at Bakugo. However, they weren't at all just dating or anything. They were basically kind of like brother and sister. As Izuku's blood had mutated, molding with Uraraka, turning her into a ghoul. And because of this, he had the ghoul-like cork, and they would both continue to elude both Bakugo and the police. As this illusion would continue, both of them would end up just eluding them so much that it was just sad. Much like Bakugo, they would just run around killing people, eating them before disappearing into the night. Finally, however, Suku would end up looking to answer. Do you think we should start spreading just the cork? He would ask towards her as she would end up looking towards him. What do you mean? I did a study on something. When I broke into one of the science labs at UA during that time, I found something. It said that corks were starting to go extinct. As, as quickly as they came, they were starting to disappear. You know how the corkless population was only 20% just a couple of years ago? It's risen to over 40. Suku would say towards her, she would look completely astonished and surprised. So what do you mean? I mean... That... Perhaps, with the spreading ability of this cork, we could serve this cork could live on far past our deaths. We could become far stronger than we ever wished to be in this lifetime. Considering you ruined my life once, I guess, you know what? Sure. 
as and would go about just making tiny wounds on random people before putting a tiny drop of blood into them. They would only do this to one person every single day, a select few, and every time this person would have a child, it would spread down and then down. They would do this to about a thousand kids or a thousand people. And then in 10 years, it had jumped to 10,000. And then in another 10 years, it would jump to an, an to another 10,000. As they had done it to around 5,000 people after the first year, doing it to a few more just so it would spread sooner. And this would continue happening up until their deaths with around maybe 100,000 people by the time they were dying. And because of this, the ghoul just time had managed to spread. And that is where Tokyo Ghoul would end up picking up the story. As the My Hero Academia universe came before the Tokyo Ghoul universe in this what if. It came before it and it would end up just causing it. Izuku was the first ghoul. He was patient zero and had spread the entire thing. And as Bak would try to hunt out down both Izuku and Uraraka, both of them ended up just letting him capture them. As Bakugo would look towards Uraraka, asking her why, why would she do this? Why would he kill so many innocent people? However, she would only look towards him. It was to survive. As Bakugo would shake his head, or they would both be placed in prison, where it would eventually break out, going into the forest and living off the land for their rest of their days. As Izuku ended up teaching her that they can live just around two miles north of a huge canyon or cliff, where it would basically be like how the Tokyo Ghoul on Teku Ghouls would get air human, human meat from just it was hide and all that stuff. So, Izuku and them would end up doing that, not killing any more people, having their bloodline just go on for so long. So it really wasn't, it kind of wasn't their bloodline, and it kind of was. Still kind of a bit confusing. And that is where What If Deku Was a Ghoul comes to an end. I hope you all did enjoy this series, and if you did, smash the like button and consider subscribing. It really does help this channel out as I upload every single day. Once again, I'm sorry there was no gameplay in this part, as my recording software gameplay was bugging out and just being stupid. And yeah, I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.